Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're going to pick up where we left off. If you recall in the previous video, we found the sum of moments and the uh, the sum of forces. And um, when we did that, we have two simultaneous equations. We had a value d and a value z that we needed to solve for. Two equations and two unknowns make our life pretty easy. Once we've punched these in and we found a depth of 10.48 uh, feet for our pile and a point of rotation that is 2.19 feet from the tip of that pile uh, going in the upwards direction. So what we need to do now, our goal now, is to understand not only what uh, what value, uh, what depth we need to drive the pile, but we also need to understand where the maximum moment occurs because that is what we are going to design the pile for. So solving the two equations, we find d and z. We've done that already. Now our goal is to find the maximum moment that happens to occur at the point of zero pressure. Now that's not the point of rotation. Okay, It's actually the point of zero pressure. And so what we're actually looking for is where the area of this triangle here, this upper triangle, plus the area of this triangle here equates with the distance, with the triangle area on this side. Now again, this is not drawn to scale. These are all unknown, so it's all conceptual. So we're actually going to be extending further in this direction okay, than this uh, diagram shows. But we need these areas to equal the, the area over here, and it's going to be somewhere above the point of rotation. Okay, So what we need to know is to start is where does this point, where does this line here, we know that this is, this is an expression for PE, right? So this is balancing the passive pressure that exists on the excavated side, passive pressure over here, the balance between that and the active pressure over here. Now what we know at this point is that at this point right here, we have a only active pressure and we've accumulated to PA. Now from this point down, as we go further down, we've got a lot of passive pressure over here resisting our active pressure. Until we cross this line here, we still have more active pressure on the retained side than we have passive pressure on the excavated side. Now because there's an order of magnitude difference between the coefficients, this is going to increase at a fairly rapid rate, meaning we are going to cross the plane of that pile and then in this region we will have more passive pressure at this depth right here uh, on this side than we do active pressure on the other side, which is why this pressure diagram has crossed that line. Okay, so we need to find this value y. And it's actually a little bit complex to find this value y. It tends to be pretty simple once you understand it, but originally understanding it can be quite difficult. So let's take a look at this, uh, and we'll do it out a, a conceptually at first. So we'll scroll down a little bit here, draw a line above, uh, demark demarking where we left off before. And we need to think about this in terms of, uh, it depends on who you are, how you think of these, how you kind of rationalize this problem. If I think about this, I've got this PA1 here. And I need to go down some depth Y to the point where the passive pressure on the retained side, remember this is passive retained, P passive, overcomes what we have for P active. Okay? We've accounted for, if this is PA1, we've accounted for everything above uh, this, remember this is the floor of our excavation, we've accounted for everything on the excavated side. Everything above H, that's where PA comes from. It's that magnitude. What we're wondering now is how, at what, at what distance, Y, okay, do we need to go down where the passive pressure has overcome the active pressure so much that we're now at zero? Okay? Another way to think about this is at what depth is the active pressure, the total active pressure, equal to the total uh, passive pressure on the excavated side? So if we were to draw that out conceptually, this is there's a PA1 in here somewhere, we're at some depth Y, and then we have this passive pressure over here also where all of these triangles equate is what we're looking for. Okay? So what we need to understand is what, what is the slope of this line? Okay, now I can tell you we're looking at the balance between active and passive. So if we think about that, how do we compute the passive pressure at some depth y? Well, that's going to be simply gamma times y, that's the weight of the soil above it, times kp, right? 
Well, how do we compute the active pressure? Well, it's also going to be gamma y. Instead of kp, we're going to be dealing with ka. Okay. Now remember, we have accounted for all of the pass, all of the active pressure above this point at p a one. Okay, by uh, by including it in the expression. And so what we're really looking for is what's the difference between that? That's going to be our slope. Okay, that's going to be the exp that's going to be the difference between the active and the passive. Okay. Now when we set that slope, let's go here quickly to our PowerPoint slide so you can see this. We'll scroll down and go to our next line. What we're looking for is the slope of the line is gamma kp minus gamma ka. Now let's look at our OneNote program here. You can see here another way of describing that is gamma kp minus gamma ka, which is also equal to gamma y kp minus ka. Okay, that's going to be the slope of our line. Y is going to be essentially the, the, our unknown in this problem. And what we know we need, if we look at this really quickly here, is we need to know where that equals zero. So if we're increasing to the left there, right, where our passive pressure is increasing, we need to know when it's going to overcome the P sub A1. Right? Another way to think about that is think of P A1 as a Y intercept think of your y as uh, the slope of that line and that you're solving for where that line equals zero. So another way to look at this, as I've shown you here, is to say, all right, well, PA1 is going to equal where y times gamma kp minus gamma ka. All right. That's also, if I carry that over, I could say 0 equals P A1 over gamma, over, sorry, over Y times gamma KP minus gamma, sorry, minus gamma KA. All right, we know all of these values, and so we can solve simply for y, and y in this problem is simply going to be equal to 1.3 feet. Now, this is probably the most difficult of the things to uh, of of the things to understand is in terms of what this slope of this line is doing. Um, you can actually rotate this if it makes a little bit more sense to you. But the way that I think about it is this: this line is telling me the extent to which the passive pressure is overcoming the active pressure. This is my passive pressure, our active pressure I start with. And so what I need to know is when this value here has been overcome by the slope of this line here. And I know that the, sl that the, that the magnitude of that, where y at this depth, where it's all equal to zero, is going to be y times gamma kp minus uh, gamma ka. All right? That's going to tell me where that occurs. If I set pa equal to that depth, that unknown depth where I now have my uh, point of, of, zero, of, of where I'm crossing that line, okay, uh, then I can just set it equal to zero and find uh, 1.3 feet, okay? So give it some thought, think about through this, you can see how I've drawn this out here. If you start to understand what the slope of the line is really being that, that gamma kpka, all right, that's this, uh, that's this expression uh, right here then I think it becomes a little bit clearer. All right. Once we've done that, we really are only doing this portion in order to get to the next step, which is solving for this value we are going to call x. x is where the pressures are now equal to zero. That's our point of zero stress. Okay. So there's our slope of our line. We find the pressure at y. We've already done that. It's 1.3. And then what we need to do here is find the distance x where the area of the triangles on the right hand side, our PA plus the area of the triangle we were just dealing with, is equal to the area of the triangle on the left hand side, which is at some depth x. Okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna think about that for a second. Okay? Where that uh, depth x will be. Okay? So if I think about this what I have is the same slope of a line. So let's go back to our, our worksheet. Um, go back to our worksheet here. 
and we'll open up OneNote. If I think about what's going on there, I need, and I'll draw a line here so that we can express that. What I know is this. I've got this area where I have P, where I have this base P, A, 1. I've got this little triangle below that we were just dealing with to some depth Y, okay, and another, and also a base of P, A, 1. And I know that I need the sum of these two to equal that triangle that's on the other side at some depth x. Okay? Now if I think about it like that, I know something already which is really nice, and that is I know the slope of this line, because the slope of this line here is equal to the slope of this line here. Go back here, you can see it's all one line. Okay? So I know the slope of the line, which is really nice. And so what I can do is I can say, well, what's the area of, of the upper triangle? Well, that's simple. That's PA1 times H over 2. And then I say, all right, what's the area of the second triangle? That's going to be PA1 times Y over 2. And I need to set that equal to some base here, okay, some base that will compute times X over 2. All right. Now, if I know, if I if I want to keep it all in terms of x, that's my unknown. I can do that, right? So if I think about this, what's the slope of my line? The slope of the line from the previous part, if I look up here, okay, is going to be gamma kp minus gamma ka. In this case, up here, I was multiplying by y because I was trying to find that distance at which those equated. But if I look at that here. I just replace this with x. And so if I say gamma kp minus gamma ka okay, times x times x over 2, I go here. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, I've simplified it here in this expression for you. But if I look at that, what all I've done is I've taken the same slope and uh, instead of and that's going to be my, my slope instead of multiplying against y to find that depth. If I look at this uh, distance here, I'm going to multiply by x to find that depth. Okay, Understanding that that's going to be a negative pressure with x, whereas the y side was going to be positive. All right? And what I end up with is this expression. Um, you can see here we can solve we can solve this, the PA1H over 2 and PAY over 2. Um, if I simplify this area over here, another way to look at it is going to be uh, gamma X times KP minus KA all times X over 2. And if I solve X in this problem, it ends up being 3.91 feet. Now I would suggest, you know, pause it. We're almost at the end of this video, but take a pause and make sure that you can compute this uh, value here. But if you have Y and you have X, that's great. What we know is at this point X, that's where the forces are equal to zero. This is our, our, our location of max moment. All right. The next lesson we're going to talk about how to compute the maximum moment, and then we're going to compare that to uh, the capacity of the pile. So I hope you enjoyed it. This was a uh, little bit of a difficult one for me to explain, but hopefully helpful for you as you go through. Really give these things some thought, and I think you'll you'll come out on top. It's really all about understanding the slope of the line uh, that occurs from P A one all the way down to P uh, all the way down to location depth x. Um, that's really what we're looking at, and that is this value here, gamma K P minus gamma K A. That is the rate at which the passive pressure overcomes the active pressure above the point of rotation. Okay? Talk to you next time.